If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name is Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the first set of regulations to be um, released around robo taxis, and we're also going to be talking about Neo's uh, up and coming 2025. Uh, roadmap where that stands um, as well as their battery swapping stations updates as it pertains to NEO and Envo. So this is going to be a super interesting, super insightful video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon and leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us continue to do research, helping us continue to share this good and great information with a broader audience. So we thank you for that. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Let's kick things off with what might be the biggest regulatory development in autonomous driving history. The NHTSA just dropped their AV step framework. And let me tell you that this is absolutely massive. We're finally seeing the world's first comprehensive robo taxi framework. And the details are fascinating. First off, let's clear up who this affects. This framework is targeting level four autonomous driving vehicles. We're talking about robo taxis, buses, trucks and van. And here's something interesting. They've completely abandoned level three autonomy. The middle ground where the car can drive itself, but you need to take over, gone. The NHTSA is basically saying either the human is responsible or the car is responsible. There's no gray area. Now let's dive into the nitty gritty of these regulations because here's where things get interesting. The NHTSA has laid out specific criteria for who can play in this space. You need to be, you need to be one of four types of entities autonomous driving developers, vehicle manufacturers, fleet operators, or system integrators. And get this, you have to prove your capabilities in two ways. First, through self-certification, and then through independent third-party verification. Here's where it gets really interesting for safety considerations. The framework explicitly states that if you're using safety officers, you know, those backup drivers, you can't carry passengers period. They've also put an ax on 5G cloud driving. The message is clear. If you need a safety officer, you're not ready for prime time autonomous driving. And let's talk about accountability because this is huge. When accidents happen and they will happen, let's be real, there's now a framework for who's responsible. Companies need to submit quarterly reports and there's a very specific incident reporting system. If there's an accident, companies have to prove that they can fix the issue before they're allowed back on the road. This is exactly what was missing when crews had their issues. But here's the kicker, the cost of entry. We're talking about eight hundred thousand dollars just to get a single vehicle licensed think about companies that have multiple vehicles in their lineups this is expensive this is a barrier to entry for a lot of people trying to dip their toes in the water in this space that doesn't even account for all the development costs the nhtsa is basically saying that if you want to play in this space you better be serious and you better put your money where your mouth is. Now let's talk about NEO because they've got some fascinating, some fascinating developments that are obviously going to uh, ring throughout the EV landscape per usual. Their 2025 product roadmap is ambitious to say the least. So let me tell you all about it. First up, as we've discussed many times, we've got the ET9 flagship sedan. And this isn't just another model, it's the first model that'll be running on the NT3.0 platform. Also running with a 900 volt system. The starting price, 788,000 RMB. They even um, had 999 units of a limited edition version that sold out fairly quickly, very quickly actually, and that was priced at 818,000 RMB. So we'll see if that's an indicator of what demand will look like for the standard version, but uh, they're, signaling, they're signaling some serious demand. But the real game changer might be what they're doing with their sub-brands. Envo is launching two SUVs in the second half of 2025, and now 
they're directly targeting Lee Otto's territory. We're talking about a six slash seven seater that's going to be competing directly with the Lee L8 and a five seater going up against the Lee L7. And here's the strategic play, just like they did with um, the first model to release under Envo the L60, which undercut Tesla's Model Y. Uh, with these two new models, they're planning to undercut Lee Otto's models as well. And not just undercut the models, also offering competitive feature. Let's talk about their existing um, lineup for a second because transparency matters. Neo's management admitted that their um, existing lineup uh, built on their NT 2.0 platform underperformed expectations by 40 to 50%. They were targeting 35,000 to 40,000 monthly deliveries, but only were able to deliver around 21,000. So here's why this admission is actually positive. They've identified key issues, product launch scheduling, sales force efficiency, and supply chain bottlenecks particularly with the Envo L60 battery. Now let's dive into the infrastructure because this is crucial for their ecosystem play. Neo just crossed 2,900 battery swapping stations in China with 929 of these along highway. Think about that scale for a moment. They've added 589 stations just this year and a thousand of them are available to the Envo brand. That's massive for their ecosystem strategy, but it's not just about swap stations. They've got 2,545 supercharging stations with 11,740 charging piles plus 1,672 destination chargers offering another 13,042 charging piles. That's some serious infrastructure investment. Looking ahead at their future targets, Neo's management is confident in achieving 100% year-over-year growth in 2025. They're targeting an annual volume of 300,000 to 400,000 for the Neo brand in the short term, scaling up to 500,000 to 600,000 in the long term. And here's the interesting perspective from Neo's um, management. They believe that China's passenger car market will remain relatively fragmented, especially in the premium segment. And uh, China's passenger car market is a market that exceeds 20 million units annual. What's particularly fascinating is their power up counties plan. They're aiming to have their battery swapping network cover more than uh, 2,300 counties in China's 27 provincial level administrations by December 2025. That's not just ambitious, it's a complete reimagination of how we think about EV infrastructure. So what does all this mean for the broader EV market? We're seeing a complete convergence of two major trends, the maturation of autonomous driving technology with clear regulatory framework and the evolution of EV companies into full service mobility companies. The players who can now Navigate both of these spaces while maintaining strong unit economics are going to be the ones to watch for. That's all I've got for you today, folks. As always, this is never financial advice, just your daily dose of um, market insights and analyses. Anyways, if you're new here, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. If you're new or returning, click the like button, click the notification bell icon, leave a comment down below. All that engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, especially if you found this video uh, informative, insightful, uh, useful, at the very least entertaining. Uh, this is Obi signing off of the Courtside Financial Podcast. We'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.